Guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on my channel, Film Fanatic. And before we begin, I'd like to apologise for this review being very, very late for Finding Dory. I think it's been out for about two weeks, and I'd seen it like a week ago. I have video planned, I just never had any time to actually film it and edit it and upload it. So I do apologise, it is a little bit late, I promise. The next film I review will be on time. But anyway, let's just get into the review. I'm sure most of you will be aware of the Pixar masterpiece, which is Finding Nemo. A story of a dad fish travelling across the ocean with the help of his friend Dory to find his kidnapped son. Or would it be fishnapped? So the storyline for this film is that Dory suddenly remembers she has parents, she has a family across the ocean somewhere out there and she is on a mission to find them. So with the help of Marlin and Nemo she travels across the ocean much like they did in the first one to find her parents and reunite, become a family again. Along the way she finds out she wasn't actually part of the ocean in the first place, she was actually raised in an aquarium. So with a lot of funny moments and a lot of help from friends along the way, Dory eventually is reunited with her parents and they become a family again in the ocean with Marla and Nemo and it's just a happy ending for everyone. So there's a lot of things I want to talk about in this video so I'm going to try and fire through them as quick as possible. Ellen DeGeneres is fantastic as the voice of Dory yet again. She brings her quick-witted and family-friendly humour with a little bit of stuff for the adults. The supporting cast is fantastic once again. The returning characters of Marlin and Nemo help carry the story forward and yet give a brilliant flashbacks to the previous movie. The way they tied Finding Nemo and Finding Dory up is fantastic. At the start of the movie we see baby Dory getting separated from her parents and she ends up going through her life alone by herself with this memory problem and then bang she runs into Marlin and that is the start of Finding Nemo and it, also, and it is also the start of Finding Dory. It was very well done. The very funny yet very serious character of Hank voiced by Ed O'Neill really helped contrast Dory's uplifting and very light-hearted personality. He's one of the characters that only thought for himself and yet just in the moment he raised himself up and became the better person. Or octopus. I thought Destiny, voiced by Caitlin Olsen, was hilarious in the movie. The, the really good throwback to Finding Nemo was when Dory spoke the whale, and it was one of the funniest moments in the movie, in my opinion. And it turns out she spoke whale because she actually did speak to a whale through the pipes of the aquarium. Kind of a weird twist of Sigourney Weaver being in the movie. As Sigourney Weaver, she was kind of the voice tour guide of the aquarium, and you couldn't help but think that's so weird that she's in the movie. When Finding Nemo first came out, the animation was pretty outstanding for the year. You jump forward to this year and not much is changing the animation process but everything just looks a lot more beautiful and pretty and light and colourful in the world of Dory. I thought Diane Keaton and Eugene Levy were fantastic as Dory's parents. They brought that kind of fatherly, motherly love for a child who has a, sadly, a mental issue. Do you want to call it that? Seems a bit serious for a finding Dory who has a memory problem and they just brought that really lovable characters, you brought them to life, you really believe that they loved this daughter and you really believe that you missed them. The one the moments, I'm not gonna lie, I teared up a little bit at was there was a lot of flashbacks to young Dory and she would pick up shells and what they would do is her parents would leave trails of shells back to the house so that if she ever forgot where she was going all she had to do was follow the shells and she'd return to them and at the end of the movie when she does find them she finds they have, have left shells leading all the way back to their new home and it, it brought me to tears a wee bit, I'm not going to lie. But I was very, very young when the movie was first released. In fact, I don't remember going to see it at all. It turns out my mum did, in fact, take me to the cinema to see it. I just don't remember. I do remember watching it when I was roughly eight or nine years old, and I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. It was very funny for a young kid, and even now when you watch it, Finding Nemo is still hilarious. But in my opinion, I think Finding Dory is funnier. I'm not saying it's more heartfelt, and I'm not saying it's better than Finding Nemo, I just think it's a lot more entertaining for both young adults like myself who grew up watching Finding Nemo and also the adults who took their kids to see it when they were younger. I just think Finding Dory is fantastic for all ages, much like Finding Nemo. They did a really good job in continuing that phrase. For example, me as a young teen love Finding Dory and Finding Nemo and my mum who I went to see it with loved Finding Nemo and loves Finding Dory and my little cousin who is five loves Finding Nemo and now loves Finding Dory. They have done a fantastic job at welcoming all age groups to the new Finding Dory side of the story. Well, have you guys seen Finding Dory? If you have let me know what you thought of it in the comment section down below. I do love to hear from you guys. If you like this video then be sure to leave a like down below. It really does help my channel out and do not forget to subscribe so you never miss another Film Fanatic video. And I'll see you next time, guys. Take care. Bye. <laughs>